Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how you can build this dashboard from scratch. Stay tuned. So as you already know, there's like a thousand ways you can really build reports and dashboards within Power BI, right? So I'm just going to show you the way I do it for this one specifically. Now I know you might have a different way of doing it and that's completely okay, right? Because as long as we get the same end result, that's what really matters. But this is probably gonna take at least two or three videos simply because there's so much depth behind it. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can model the data, then also go into Power Query and then Table View as well. And then we'll start focusing on creating measures and then do all the visualization stuff thereafter. All right, so without further ado, let's dive in y'all. All right, so the first thing I did was I loaded the data. So it's a CSV file. So this one is really gonna be about how certain types of actions and requests are really living and how long they've been within a system and which ones are all pending, right? I got this export from a system that I utilize. That means that all of these types of actions that are kind of in the system right now have not been approved yet. So we really wanna identify, okay, how long have they been living for? within the system and when was the last time they were kind of modified, right? So that we can see, okay, where's the biggest gaps lie and then what type of actions are really the biggest ones really at risk for not being completed or what's just the general stats we're looking at. As we know, right, the first thing we wanna do as always is go through our data in Power Query and identify, okay, do we have any gaps? Do we have any errors? We need to remove any columns. Do we need to change the data types? I'm gonna move through that real quick. All right, so the first one I've run into that I have to actually change is gonna be the last modified one. So we know we can't go for a whole number to a date. So we gotta to go to text first. I'm gonna add a new step here, and then I'm just gonna change it to a date now. And then now we have a date. All right, same thing for this one that's created as well. We're gonna change it to a text first. And then we're going to change it to a date. And then we're going to keep it moving. So we have proposed presentation date. That's another one as well. So we're just going to change that to a text once again. Then date. So if you haven't seen the trend already, it's going to be mailing the dates that come in that are seen as text. We're just going to change those to an actual date format. And then all the ones that you see are coming in as long text. So those strings that we see here. We just want to make sure those are text as well. And then also just another tip is going to be if something has values in it and text, we just want to make sure that's listed as a text. We had another one, par effective date. That's going to be personal action request effective date. I changed with date format as well. I'm also going to go ahead and duplicate this approver ID column simply because I'm going to need it for later down the road. And as you can see, it gets loaded to the back side, right? I'm going to change this approver ID copy. I'm going to call it most reset step so this is going to identify who had custody of it last and then i just want to gradually screen through this entire table as well just to make sure that there's no error so if we're looking at the bars here we want to make sure that there's no candy canes or no red lines that we're looking at and if there are we can probably delete those columns now there is a caution when it comes to deleting columns in power bi because it's going to follow that step within applied steps right so if it's deleting column actually don't need the column you might as well just leave it over there unless there's an actual error that's preventing you from refreshing your data loading your data successfully then i'll just caution you just to leave it there because the next time you load your data power bi is going to be like hey you know i knew you had this column before it's not there now you know what's the deal let's just say for instance the data set changes and you no longer have that column available it's going to be looking for that column again every single time unless you go in here and apply it steps and change it and you can right as a developer you can always do that but for me it's just easier to just go ahead and leave those columns i actually don't need i probably don't even need you know about 80 percent of the columns that are here right now but i'm not going to go here and sit here and just delete all these columns because it's really unnecessary all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit close and apply real quick all right, so now it's telling me i do have some errors so i know this column always returns some errors so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the source data itself within Power Query at least. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that column because I have no use for it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this group and go back to Workflow Analytics. I'll find this column here and I'm just going to delete it. And we're going to run this again. And now this time we had no errors, right? So we're good there. So all our data within Power Query at least is transformed. So now we can go into the model view, create those relationships, and then I'll go into table view real quick. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a relationship between the workflow analytics and my table here, my UIC table. So this is gonna be basically the organizational level of slicers that I wanna utilize. So I wanna be able to pinpoint down to the lowest echelon. So this is gonna be able to help me do that because I'm gonna go from that one to many concept, right? I wanna look at one structure and then see all the data points associated with that structure and then i want to look at you know by rank as well just in case so there's numerous ways to do this once again right we can drag and drop items one onto the other or you can just you know open up manage relationships and just build them from scratch here so we're actually going to build them from scratch here so i'm going to click on new relationship i'm going to go workflow analytics I'm going to find my rank. Then I'm going to go to skill level translator. I'm going to find my rank as well. Now it's many to one, right? Only because the many is on the top, the one's on the bottom, but it'd be one to many if I just flip this, right? If I put skill level translator on the top and then workflow analytics on the bottom, it does not matter. It's just the cardinality is just explained based upon, you know, which way is really oriented, right? So we're going to keep it active and we're going to keep it single as well. And now I'm going to do another one and I'm going to do workflow analytics once again. And this one is going to be UIC so that organizational code and it automatically marries up to this UIC here. And we're going to press save. So that's a many to one as well. And now we have our two relationships. All right, so we got two of the first three steps kind of knocked out, right? We have Power Query done. We have Model Viewer done. Now we're going to go to the table view. We're going to create our custom columns that we need before we start diving into creating calculations, all those different measures that we need, and then creating all our visualizations, okay? All right, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to look for all our dates. We're going to change it to the format that we want personally, okay? All right, so the one we're looking at here is last modified. So I'm just going to change this on the drop down. I'm going to change it to the format that I like personally, which is this one. And now here we are. So I'm going to do that for every single one. And then we're going to move forward. All right, so once you're done with that, the next thing we have to start thinking about, if you haven't started thinking about it already, is what kind of columns, what kind of data points you want to create, right? So what's going to help our end user have more flexibility and capability when it comes to that report, that dashboard that we're making, so that they can utilize all the tools at their disposal to get the end result that they're really looking for, right? To answer any of those questions that they may have. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make five different custom columns. So the first one is going to be based upon, you know, how can we get those types of actions, those type of requests, those really long names that we see, shorten them, condense them, just so we can get something small and straight to the point of really what we're looking for, right? So we're going to get that acronym or a short name list of really what they are so that we can group them and bin them together. The next one's going to be how many days since it was created. And the third one's going to be how many days since it was modified. And then the fourth one is going to be days to presentation, right? So those are going to be all three different date diff kind of functions. So I don't want to utilize the actual values that are within the query itself because it's not a direct query, it's not an import query. So we don't have the data coming in at a certain cadence, nor is it kind of live. So since it's static, since it's an Excel file, CSV file that I imported, you know, we're going to need to make sure that data is always live and it changes day by day. And the last one we're going to do is identify, okay, is it in an approval stage or is it in a final HR processing stage? Those are two indicators that we really need to find out. And that's going to help us understand, okay, where is it within the life cycle? So those are the five columns that we're going to do. So let's get started. So if we're looking at workflow type, this is actually going to be the types of workflows that we're looking at. I'm not a huge fan of this, but you know, what we can do is we can convert this to read as something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to now go to home and click on new column. And we're just going to start writing out our expression on what we want. Now, another good practice here is going to be probably screenshot all those different values that we just showed, just so you can have a good reference point. But you also have to understand, you know, what do those actually mean? You know, what are we translating them to? I kind of already know them and I did it before previously. So we're just going to kind of run through the motion here really quick. We're going to call this par description type equals. This is going to be if workflow type equals EOFM. Then we're going to call that promotion, demotion, or disciplinary. If 
And here we can just kind of copy this entire part and just keep reusing it. It's IP underscore ACT EOAW. Then we want to call it assignments. And we're just going to rinse and repeat this entire process where you exhaust everything. And we want to ensure that we have the fact table data too, right? So we want to make sure that just because all these people within this table of data that we have, you know, they may not be covering all the different types of actions, types of requests that may be in the system. So we want to make sure that we have the fact table of data points as well. So we cover all the bases, right? So I'm going to just fast forward real quick and we're going to run through this. All right, so once we're done typing it all out, this is what it's going to look like. We have all our different steps in here for every different type of transaction that may be in the system. And we're just changing the name, right? Something that's easier to read. I'm not a fan of underscores. I understand why systems need to have underscores in them. But if we're talking about reading data in terms on the front end for those end users, they're not going to want to see that kind of stuff. So this is what we translate it to. And then... Anything that is not listed here is going to be listed as other. We know that all of our data is caught because we got everything that's from the fact table, right? So we went to our system, our source within the system that we get our data from, and we found out where all the fact table data is. But we know that if an other is ever present within our data, we know, hey, you have to go back into it and identify, okay, what was added, what was modified so that we can you know, update Power BI as well. But once we're done with that, we're just gonna go ahead and run this real quick. So within Power BI, every single time we create a custom column, we always wanna ensure that if it's an if statement, especially, you know, we're creating conditions, we wanna make sure that we're validating what we're doing, right? So we don't see a value as other, so that's good. So we know every single thing was caught here. There's no blank as well, there's no other, you know, everything is cool, so we're good. We can move forward with the next column. All right, so we're gonna call this one days since created we're gonna say equals we're gonna say date diff and we're gonna say created so it's gonna be the created date we're gonna say today and day so this is gonna tell me how many days since today has been created for we're gonna run that and we can see a lot of these values are pretty long so we have some that are going past 100 200 300 i mean this is insane right we're gonna keep doing that for other columns as well so we're gonna call this days since modified equals date diff we're gonna do last modified do today and then day we're gonna close that and you see how many days since it was last touched updated modified so some of them weren't even modified ever they've just been kind of sitting you can see that just by looking at the two dates side by side right we got a lot of them that are actually like that unfortunately all right so the next one we're looking at is going to be for awards specifically so there's awards that are presented so there's a presentation date tied to the award right so we want to ensure that the awards are completed prior to the presentation date so that's going to you know raise a red flag immediately if it's not so if we're getting too close to that period we know there's something that we need to do to ensure that there's some sort of movement and traction on that type of request so we're going to say days to presentation equals this is going to be if search so we're going to search for a text right so we're going to find the text first so what do we want to find first we're going to say award so it's the text and we identified that because there's a double quotation we're going to put a comma now it's going to ask us where is that text at that you're looking at. So we're going to do par description type. So it's actually the column that we made. So we're bouncing off that one now. We're going to say start position one, not found value zero. We're going to close that zero. Date diff today at post presentation date day blank. All right. So this is basically just going to tell you if an award is found, if the text value of award is found within the column of par description type it's going to then return how many days from today is going to be the presentation date and that's why we put the day at the back end and all this madness here just can tell me okay if it meets our criteria then awesome if it doesn't return a zero and then if it does continue on and just give me the day count so now we're combining a search date diff and blank kind of all in one right and the reason we put a blank here is because we actually don't want a zero we just want a blank instead 
So now we're going to run that and we're going to see how many days to presentation do we have. And we can see a lot of them are actually negative values, right? So that means those days have already passed. And that's fine. That's not a big deal because we know that the data is actually correct. So the last column that we're going to build out and then we're going to pause there is going to be where is the actual status of the PAR? So the actual request of the action, is it in the approval stage or is it, you know, completed? Is it sitting with HR now? So that's what we want to identify. So we're going to say status result. You can call this whatever you want as well. We're going to say if, and then we're going to say or, because we're going to have more than one condition. We're going to say approval status, and we're going to say P for pending. And then approval status again is blank. Then return me approval chain. So this is going to signify that it's still within the approval process because it's pending, so that I want to return approval chain now. But we have another condition that we want to apply, right? Which is why we have the OR function kind of built in. So now we want to say if workflow status equals a for approved then return me approved slash hr processing comma other status and then the other status is kind of a catch-all right so this is going to be okay if none of these conditions are met then give me other status but there should not be another status because those are the only two types of conditions we can have so we're going to just gonna close that now and we're going to close this and we're going to run this all right, so we actually see other status here now. So I know I made a mistake here. This is actually supposed to be approval status. So this is why checking your stuff matters. I'm going to run this again. And now we have our correct statuses, right? There's only two. So since we just completed that, the next video is going to be about how can we create a visualization with all the data, right? So we're going to create measures, bookmarks, page navigation, you know, dynamic visuals across the board. So I'm going to show you how to build this dashboard once again from scratch just to help, you know, give you more ideas on how you can really develop different dashboards, different concepts, themes, and really what can work best for you and your organization, right? Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video helped you a lot. And until next time.